It's why you're so willing to lay it all on the line. Hit the floor. Feel the pain. It's all been worth it. And look at you now. It's all you think about. It consumes your days. You play for community and tradition. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Some of you will move on to another season or another life. But first, one last dance with this team, these fans, with this great game. Make the moment count. For all the hard work and dedication, this is your chance to shine. Welcome to the tradition of March Magic. just the dreams of a basketball season they are the dreams of one's life and what happens on this day as they walk into this building will follow them forever the big schools take over the big house now the class a championship matches okamas and saginaw arthur hill with dreams on the line this afternoon here in east lansing welcome back inside the breslin center and our continuing coverage of the ms MHSAA Basketball Championships. I'm John Keating, joined by former Clarkston High basketball star Tim McCormick. It wasn't that long ago. What are these kids feeling right about now? Uh, the beauty of today, John, is that these kids 10 years ago were little kids dreaming about playing for a state title, shooting tens of thousands of baskets in their driveway or on the playground, wherever they're from, and today they get a chance to play for it. The Lumberjacks of Saginaw Arthur Hill played a very rugged schedule to get them to this point of the season, and they're led by their equally rugged forward, Dar Tucker. Yeah, the legend of Dark Tucker continues as a freshman. He was amazing. Number two off the dribble is absolutely astounding. Now he's an all-state phenom, and his two big free throws in the Class A semi against Detroit Redford really led them. And they are not a single-man team. They're loaded with talent. There are the numbers from his semifinal win, just your basic double-double uh, to help the Lumberjacks continue their season here this afternoon. The Chieftains of Okemos became number one in the state in late February. A win here this afternoon will get them to number one for the season, and they are led by their lightning-quick guard, Jonathan Jones. Yeah, and if you haven't seen Jones play, sit back. You're going to enjoy the versatility. He nails the three, number 23, is so good off the dribble with a mid-range game. And if you fall asleep, he'll go all the way against Orchard Lake St. Mary. 25 points, eight rebounds, and four assists. And the uh, victory for Okemos came at the expense of the highly touted Orchard Lake St. Mary's guard, Kaitlin Lucas, but it's Jonathan Jones who is standing tall. And Okemos going up against Sagana Arthur Hill, each of them trying to win a championship. And for each of them, it has been a while. Okemos won their last title in 1982. Sagana Arthur Hill way back in 1944. Will those streaks end? They will for one team. We'll begin to find out who that is when we come right back. The MHSAA Finals on FSN Detroit are brought to you by Bell Tire. Trust us, we'll make you happy you came in. That's a promise. By Gardner White Furniture, we're known by the money you keep. And by Wallside Windows, we can do that. We are the factory. Class A championship to be decided here at the Breslin Center this afternoon. So much emotion right on edge. Let's take you inside the Okemos locker room just moments ago. And Dan Stoltz had a very heartfelt message. You guys have done everything and more that I could ask. And I'm proud of you. This is a game that the players have waited for. The coaches have certainly waited just as long. Let's get it started. Let's find out who the starters are. This afternoon, we're joined by the public address announcer, Eric Oforsett. And now let's meet the starting lineups for today's game between the Lumberjacks of Saginaw Arthur Hill High School. And 
the Chieftains of Okemos High School. For Arthur Hill, at forward, 6'5", junior, number two, Darquavis Tucker. For Okemos at forward, 6'3", junior, number 24, Michael Kaler. And forward for the Lumberjack, 6'4", sophomore number four, Latrez Mouchant. For the Chieftains at forward, 6'3", senior, 35, Bobby Albers. For Arthur Hill at center, 6'3", senior, 44, Jeff Jones. For Okemos at center, 6'10", junior, 44, Anthony Ayani. Lumberjack guard, 6'2", junior, number one, Tommy Freiter. Okemos guard, six foot senior, 23, Jonathan Jones. The other guard for Arthur Hill, 5'7", senior, number three, Greg Lock. And for Okemos, It's Class A basketball, and it's here at the Breslin Center. Okemos with a record of 25 and 1. Saginaw Arthur Hill, led by their coach Greg McMath in his fifth year. There he is, a record of 86 and 27 as he gets set to try to win his biggest game. There's Dan Stoltz, who we heard from in his locker room just a few moments ago. Let's join the third member of our broadcast crew. Here's Shereen Saskia. Shereen. Thanks, John. Well, all season long, the Chieftains have chanted NPO, NPO. Stands for no plays off. And this is a motto that Coach Stoltz introduced at the beginning of the season. The philosophy behind it is simple. He believes every player on his team is good enough to be a starter, not only on his team, but anywhere else in high school. And thus, no one should take a play off because somebody could take your spot. They have all embraced the philosophy and it's brought them here to the title game today. John? Shereen, thanks. I think we can count on the fact that no one will take a playoff with as much on the line as there is here this afternoon. A Class A championship and memories that these kids will carry with them forever. How many butterflies, Tim McCormick? One per player, and it's very big. And, and what you want to look for in this game, two outstanding teams, very well coached. I believe the Lumberjacks are more athletic. I'm really interested to see if Okemos can battle them on the boards, especially because they played yesterday. They'll be a little bit tired. Will they be able to make their outside shots? A look at the officials who will uh, call this afternoon's game. Down the lane goes the son of the coach, Greg Lawson. Rebound to Okemos. Okemos in white. Saginaw Arthur Hill in blue. Pushing the pace early. Inside goes Ivan Parker. Now, what a crowd here in the Breslin. Neither school very far away. They're very popular in their hometowns, aren't they? Tommy Prater, number one. On the wing to Dar Tucker. Prater will put it up. Off the back iron, no. Rebound to Keebler. And here comes Okemos and Johnny Jones. Long try. Back iron again. Saginaw Arthur Hill, Greg Lawson. Shot goes up. Latreus Mushan with a three. And you can tell early that Jonathan Jones is going to get his team a good look at the basket. That's the diversity you love. He can take it off the dribble, he can pass, he does it all. Too strong there, but it's put back up and in. Ayani. Ayani. Anthony Ayani. And once again, because Jones beat his man, help defense had to come. That allowed Ione on the glass. There's Prater, top of the key. Trying to get Dar Tucker involved in the offense. Tucker will take it into the lane. He'll get fouled, and he'll get the bucket. 
And I want you to enjoy the work of Jonathan Jones. Yeah, he misses the shot, but look at help defense had to leave inside, and it left Anthony Ione. And take a look, number two, Darquavis Tucker off the dribble. A matchup nightmare, John. If you put a big guy on him, he'll take him off the dribble. A little guy, he'll pound in the paint. He was 7 of 13 from the floor in the semifinal game. And a look at our road to the finals brought to you by Wallside Windows. Arthur Hill getting past to Redford. Okamas getting past Orchard Lake St. Mary's on Friday at the Breslin Center to come right back here on Saturday and play for a championship. And he calling for the ball inside. Bobby Elmer. Jonathan Jones. He'll stop. Pop. And that will just hang there and roll off. But Ayani with another putback. Isn't it an interesting equation? Once a player like Ioni gets an early layup, all of a sudden now he's demanding the ball and he's aggressive on the glass. A layup is a huge confidence booster. An extra step taken by Latreus Mushat. Offensive rebound is going to be pretty darn important in this game because the players, you know, their minds are fresh, they're excited, but their legs not quite there. I think there's going to be a lot of missed shots that these kids normally make. The size of Okamis was a concern for Arthur Hill as he prepared quick preparation. Parker has it spotted away by Dark Tucker. Oh, man. It was almost like Tucker was up too high, and so he had to hang for a little while and then block the shot. Now the elders five foot out of bounds. Okamis will get it back, and Jonathan Jones drains a three. What'd you think Jones. yesterday, John? Kalen Lucas or Jonathan Jones? They, they look pretty equal, don't they? It was fun to watch. And they had another big crowd here yesterday. There's Prater. Left hand scoop goes. That's good by number one, Tommy. And Okamas pushing the face a little bit. Oh, another block. This one from Jeff Jones. Tucker on a wing. Got it. Foul. Coach Stoltz wanted a walk prior to that. Is this a block shot right here? No, this is the drive. Athletic off the dribble. They all go off the dribble. Is this a block or an outlet pass? Wow. Dan Stoltz wanted a goaltender. One shot. Winning the three-point play is a shot. Just a sophomore. Token pressure from Arthur Hill. Easily broken by Okamis. There's a little zone defense. First time we've seen it in this game. They'll match up out of it. Like Prater's toughness. They'll try to contain Jonathan Jones. There's Ivan. That shot is defense well. Arthur Hill pushing the pace again. Prater baseline. Spins. Foul again. Now here's the story. Okamas is big. Saginaw Arthur Hill is athletic, beautiful spin, great body control, strong finish. The Lumberjacks, and they've got some Lumberjack physique in there. Look at the arms. Look at the size on Prater. Arthur Hill plays big. Tommy Prater completes the three-point play. An 8-0 run for the Jacks of Greg McMath. Whistle and will reset. Uh, is it? Sorry, you got Tim entering the game. And Jasper Bibbs. Along with Dan Hess. Gives them some intensity and toughness. And he gets fouled. I really like the way that Saginaw Arthur Hill disguises their defense. The last possession actually looked like a 1-3-1 to me, but they match up really aggressive man-to-man. -man. Coach McMath, really a disciple of Nolan Richardson, the way they defended at Arkansas. 
It's an attack, no deception type of defense. Game. Getting means and he's fouled quickly. And we had some, uh, some pretty good flow initially. We will step aside with a 13 9 Saginaw Arthur Hill lead in the Class A championship game. We'll continue in the first quarter right after this. Talking about carving into a four point early Saginaw Arthur Hill lead, they will lean on their star Jonathan Jones. His coach calls him the best player he's ever coached. Jonathan is a humble kid. He's such a likable kid. He just is so down to earth. And he's not a me, me, me kid at all. He'll He'll sacrifice himself offensively some nights for his teammates if they're trying to double team and do other things. He'll spend the night setting screens and getting assists. And if that's what it takes to win, he's happy. Jonathan Jones was brought up by the Okemos varsity midway through the, his freshman year. And he's been a, a big part of the Chieftain's success ever since. Yeah, the all-time leading scorer for Okemos. And when you listen to Dan Stoltz and how emotional he was before the game, you can tell that he really sincerely enjoys his kids. Lane goes Bibbs. He's fouled. Hey, hey, John, do you think he might be emotional thinking that next year he has to play without Jonathan Jones? Well, they have built a very nice Neither program in Pokemon. Foul on Dark Tucker, his first. Arthur Hill wants to make sure that their star stays out of foul trouble. And Bibbs made both of his free throws against St. Mary's. Misses here. And how do you like the offensive start for Saginaw, Arthur Hill? I mentioned that these guys might be a little tired, may miss some shots. Well, they're five for five from the field. Adrenaline is a wonderful thing. And there's plenty of it in the building. Greg Lawson, a five foot seven inch senior, son of head coach Greg McMath. Change up defensively for Okemos. Arthur Hill trying to figure out how to attack that. Lawson's try is too long, but it's put back up and in by Jeff Jones. Yeah, and they're going to need help up there. All the Okemos players are back. And I like the adjustment by Coach Stoltz. Lawson taken away. Lawson. Up and in. For Latrance Mushak. Wow, has he stepped up big? Mushak, the sophomore. And another quick timeout for Dan Stoltz. Beautiful adjustments by both coaches. A five for five start from the field by Saginaw Arthur Hill. And what does Okemos do? They go zone. Great idea. So on the other bench, you have Greg McMath that went into the full court pressure. Another beautiful adjustment, and this is where I like the Lumberjacks best, when they use their athleticism in a full court game. Emerson will be uh, false, take it away from him. 12-1 for Arthur Hill, helping them to a 17-10 lead with under three minutes to play in the first quarter of the Class A championship game. Glad you're along with us. John Keating and Tim McCormick and Shireen Sasky and our award-winning FSN Detroit group. Producer Michael Odino and our director this afternoon, Brian Seip. That's a pretty darn good athleticism. It kind of reminds you of the days when Jason Richardson, the former Spartan and current Golden State Warrior, was wearing the blue and gold. Changes for Oakland as Tyler Stewart has entered the ball game. Kibler into the paint. Yes. That's good by 24. Kibler. Arthur Hill. Quickly back into the front court. Against that zone. Crater shot. Won't go. Rebounded to Stewart. To Parker. Tapped away by Tommy Crater. Six foot two inch junior. Uh, if you look back on the season, Oakham has played almost 100% man to man. But Coach Stoltz knows that for two reasons. 
they can't match up physically. Number two, with tired legs, you want to try to see if Arthur Hill can beat you from the perimeter. Tyler Stewart's free try. Won't go, but it's rebounded inside by Keebler. Ball almost knocked out of bounds, but retrieved by Arthur Hill, and they'll run to a point. A little too quick, perhaps. Oh. Dart Tucker hit him right in the number. Beautiful delivery. Now it's man-to-man -man pressure from Arthur Hill. Broken by Okamis. Baseline, Ayana, yes! Ayana. So Okamas answers with four straight. Great atmosphere in the Breslin Center this afternoon, as you'd expect for a Class A championship game. There's Dar Tucker. Right to Anthony Ionic. Jonathan Jones is looking to run. Right down the middle, yes! Jones. He kept waiting for someone to come, and no one didn't. I've heard so much about Jonathan Jones. So anxious to watch him play, and from what I can tell, he's much more than a shooter. Mushot, another one. Latrans, Mushot. Mushot. 11 points now for the sophomore. Hill continuing to change defensively. Inside it goes to Ayana. Slapped away by Musha. Foul by Anello. It's a quick travel call on Tucker. Off the dribble. He is so solid. An athlete. He's smart. Good decision maker. Maybe a borderline Big Ten recruit. Definitely Mid-American Conference. Oakland University here is looking at him very strong in the Oakland County area. I think he deserves a strong look. He is a very fundamental player. What well, is running the championship round will open up some eyes. Ayani cashes in. And Oakland is back within two. Two three zone now for the Chieftains. Final seconds of the first quarter. On a wing. There's Mushad again. Yes, again. Three for number four. Mushad. 14 points for Latreus Mushad. And that has helped the Lumberjacks open a five point lead after one period of play in the Class A championship game. What a start that we're witnessing at the Breslin Center. 23 18 for Saginaw Arthur Hill. As we continue from East Lansing on FSN Detroit. Back in East Lansing, the Lumberjacks lead by five in the Class A title game. A victory today for Saginaw Arthur Hill would be doubly special for Greg McMath. Why? Not only is the coach of this team, but he also has his son, Greg Lawson, playing on the team. And in talking to coach, he said he wants this one for his son. Three years ago, when his son was on varsity, people questioned, why is he here? Does he belong? Is it because he's his coach's son? And no, it is true. Coach says he belongs here. He's earned his way. He's played well. He wants to see his son celebrate a title today. Guys? Shereen, thanks. Greg Lawson starts the second quarter on the Arthur Hill bench. Foul inside. And that foul is from Fred Meredith, who has entered the game. That's just a wonderful story by Shereen. And and actually, Greg McMath was telling me that when they came here and lost with Jason Richardson, Greg told his father, he said, you know what, I'm going to get you back there. I'm going to get you a championship someday. Jonathan Jones at the line. Maybe a few of the butterflies are popping up just a little bit. Now that we've settled in. 9 for 11 from the line yesterday, John. And many of them were clutch. And their win to get them into this afternoon's championship game. Another game tonight at 8, the Class B championship. East Grand Rapids against Detroit Renaissance. 
right here on FSN Detroit, right here at the Breslin Center. Arthur Hill on the attack. Tucker, a long three try. Ayani rebound. Looking for help as Arthur Hill's putting on the defensive clamps. Parker. Tyler Stewart. Packed away by Meredith. Nicholas gets it back. Underneath it goes. And gets the roll. Does Ayani. Anthony Ayani now in double figures with 10. Has two standout players so far on the offensive end. Ioni and also Mushat. Arthur Hill off to a 90-point pace in the first quarter. Manuel Sledge gets a three to go. Three for 21, Sledge. Jonathan Jones, great defense from Meredith. Tapped away. And it's a football game out there. Underneath. Yes. Greg Meredith. Not much of a factor in the semifinal game, but making his presence felt in the title game. The speed game suits Saginaw Arthur Hill so well. They have a lot of 94-foot athletes. It's almost a, it's like when you play with a bunch of guys that are willing to share the ball, you can't wait to get out on the break because you know the reward is coming. And Jones got it. Bobby Albert's back into the game along with Kyle Miller for the Chieftains. Eight points now for Jones. Sledge. Leave on to Keebler. Without Ayani on the court, we're going to see a different look from Okamis. They're going to be more perimeter oriented, a little bit more patient on the offensive end. And Jones makes it look so easy. Sort of cruises through defenders. Parker, before the shot, he is held. And Okamis will get the ball out of bounds. Parker's a real smooth lefty. Very smart. His coach Dan Stoltz said that he could become a great coach himself. Maybe not the most gifted player, but he gets it done because he's a competitor. He just works so incredibly hard out there. Tommy Prater back into the game. Sort of a floor general for the Lumberjacks. Inside it goes. Reverse scoop for Elvis. Nice inbound pass from Jonathan Jones. To the great delight of the Okemos faithful, who have made the short drive over. Almost a home game for the Chieftains. There's a long try from Meredith. Tapped up and in. And out. And back up. And out. And a foul called on Saginaw Arthur Hill. I'm really surprised at how well Okemos has been able to go inside against the shot blocking of the Lumberjacks. Even with Ayani on the bench, they still have had success off the dribble and careless defensive breakdowns like on that last inbounds play. And a little unprepared. Bobby Albers cashed in. Parker has it tapped away, but right to Means. That won't go. The ball is retrieved by Dar Tucker. Six foot five inch junior. Greg Meredith tries for three. Rebounded inside by Demarcus Carroll. And here comes Okens. Tucker takes it right away from Means. Tucker's been pretty quiet on the offensive end. Only two points. Good no call, I think. Crater gets called for a travel. And Okemos will regain possession of the basketball. And for the tape that is 44, Anthony Ayani. Into the game. Number 44 in white is a force in the paint, and I think it's a great idea to get him the ball inside every chance you can. Why? Because there's not a lot of shot blocking in terms of big guys for Saginaw Arthur Hill. 
They rely on athleticism, and over the course of the game, I think you can have a lot of success in the paint. Turnover, and Arthur Hill will get the ball back. For the Lumberjacks, number four. Jonathan Tons Jones, going to be very popular, number 23 number among the basketball the players. Yes. And Jones will get a blow. Entering the game, Dan Hess. And they slide back into a 1-2-2. Remember, this is not a defense that they play a lot during the season. He's tapped away, and Okamas gets it right back. Parker will settle down. Keebler will launch a three. In and out. Rebound to Hess. Going away. Demarcus Carroll gets the roll. What an athletic play. My goodness. 20, Demarcus Carroll. Quick hands of Saginaw Arthur Hill becoming a big factor in this game. Prater opening in, yes. One Tommy Prater. Well, here's the storyline. When Ultimus runs their offense and they're patient, Ultimus, they're getting right good now. shots. Otherwise, Arthur Hill's playing in transition. It is a nine-point lead now for Game Saginaw ball. Arthur Hill. Can Ultimus answer? We'll get you back to second quarter action next. Well, Okamas has the 25 and one record, a little more glittering than Saginaw Arthur Hill's 20 and six. But it's those six losses that perhaps set the Lumberjacks up for the ultimate victory here at the Breslin Center this afternoon. You got players like Dar and Tommy Juniors and Mooshak. I say, man, we're going to play the best. And that's when I took over the job. That's all. That's what I wanted to do. I, you know, we went, we was 19 to 0 a couple years ago. And, you know, I, and we got to the regionals. We lost in the regionals. And I said right then, I don't care about my record. I'm just going to play the best team, best teams possible to get us ready for the tournament. And the scheduling has really helped them a lot. Coach McMath told me that they played against Country Day earlier this year, and they were beaten by 29 points. Since then, he thinks his team has responded so well, especially on the defensive end. Right now, second and Arthur Hill is the better team, but there is plenty of time in the Class A championship game. Jay Means, exit, on his way to the basket. Through traffic, that won't go. Second Arthur Hill will get it back. As it's off a Chieftain. And there's the story. There's no deception. The Lumberjacks want to run. And if this is a full court game, they will win with ease. But John, what I'm enjoying so far is the help defense of both of these teams. If there is a breakdown off the dribble, there's somebody there with the thought of helping out. Ten point edge and fast break points in a nine point game. As we're under three minutes to go in the first half. Marcus Carroll. And Arthur Hill taking some of the year out of the basketball. The like is Dark Tucker is sitting on the bench. Thinking about a long shot. Carroll puts Tucker back in the game. Anthony Ayani will rebound. Parker. Head fake. Gets the bank. But no foul call to the great dismay of Dan Stoltz. That was a beautiful shot fake. Not really sure how that isn't a foul. We're back within seven are the Chieftains. Tucker. Got it. Number he is a horse. Remember, as a freshman, he started on varsity, got better as a sophomore, dominates as a junior, and only think what he does next year. Oakland is working their way through the trap, but a kick ball will. Send it back out of bounds. Right, I want you to enjoy yeah, the, the fundamentals of this three, play. Boston. Shot fake, draw contact, put it in, 21. three point play, uh, no call. Every basketball player everywhere wants to be able to play. The officials letting them play. 
Jones. Got it. So after a bit of a surge by the Lumberjacks, the Chieftains have answered. Greg Lawson back into the game. Crater will put up a shot. Rebounded to Orkimus. And Jonathan Jones moving quickly ahead. He'll take a three. He'll get a three. And it's now four points separating the top two teams in Class A. A 7-2 run for Orkimus. Tucker, an offensive rebound tapped up and in. Basket by two, Tucker. Parker, took an extra step. And the all-time leading scorer for Okamis. Pull up, he's the guy that can create. And I believe that their best chance to win is for him to be a little bit selfish. And I know that sounds unusual to say a basketball player should be selfish, but he's the playmaker, and I think this is a game where he needs to get up between 15 and 20 shots. Why? Because if he's drawing a lot of attention, it's going to create space for his teammates. He's also a football player, and you look at that lean physique and you wonder how. Most basketball coaches like to see their kids play football. It adds an element of toughness. We've seen that through all of the teams who've made it to the Breslin Center. Boy, they really want Lawson to dribble with his left hand. They only let the defender take one half of the court with the ultimate defense. That goes up. Rebound to Ayani. But he's fouled from behind by Tucker. Fifteen seconds to go in the second quarter of the Hill Class A championship game. Tucker, we always look forward to the chance to visit with the executive director of the MHSAA, Jack Roberts. Talk about some of the really exciting things that his organization has been involved with, some of which affects us at FSN Detroit. And we'll also share conversations with the coaches as they head off the floor. Greg McMath has to be thinking, how Anthony are we going to stop Iani. Anthony Ayani? One shot, and and one really, shot. one of the big keys is when he broke his collarbone and dislocated his shoulder this fall. He was out for eight weeks. He fought his way back. And I think he's been maybe the biggest key to their success. And this is the front end of the one and one. He's playing ultimate frisbee. Everybody knows how dangerous that can be. <laughs> Drum on the floor, and a no ball. jump ball is called, and Arthur Hill will keep it. Well, there's your football experience Rokos right there. 33. Fumble! For Ayani. Yeah, in this case right here, it might be a good idea. Catch, one dribble, shoot. And there's a good chance for Arthur Hill because I like them a lot off the dribble. Keep an eye on Prater. Couple of ticks left. Lawson. Oh my! At the hand. In and out. An off balance try for a three by Greg Lawson. But he and the Lumberjacks have a six point cushion on the Chieftains of Okemos at halftime of the Class A title game. Let's send it over to Shereen Sasky. Shereen with Greg McMahon. Thanks, John. Well, coach, you got to be happy with the lead at halftime. What about the pace of the game? Uh, we're happy with the lead. We're also happy with the pace of the game. That's our style. We just got to quit making so many silly turnovers. And sweet right now, we're shooting too many outside jump shots. I think we can get to the basket a little bit more. Anthony Ayani playing well for Okemos. How do you contain him in the second half? Well, you know, he's a big guy. We just got to keep our body on him and stay in front of him and box him out. All right. Thanks, Coach. Guys, let's go back to you. All right, Shereen, thanks. We'll, they'll go into the locker room and talk about what has happened thus far and what they hope to have happen as the third quarter begins. Jack Roberts visits with us as we continue from the Breslin Center. The last time Arthur Hill won a state championship, it was 1944. Tim McCormick was only five back then. 
Lumberjacks lead by six at halftime over Okemos. It has been punch and counter punch through the first half here thus far. John, I thought the key for Saginaw, Arthur Hill, they had an explosion of intensity on the defensive end, which generated 18 points in transition. They had seven guys score over six points. It was really good balance. Has there been anything that surprised you thus far, knowing what you've known about these teams coming in? Well, Sagan Arthur Hill with all that athleticism. I think Ioni has opened some eyes through the first half thus far. Yeah, there's two things that jump out at me. Number one, I thought that, as expected, Sagan Arthur Hill was really good in transition. Okemos was better than I anticipated inside. We know about Jones on the perimeter, but Ioni was outstanding in the paint also. No surprise why these teams are here. They're both spectacular on the defensive end. Well, Okemos certainly enjoyed the start to the Class A championship game. They had it going early over the Lumberjacks. All right, let's take a look at Jones in the middle. He is so strong when he misses Ayani on the offensive glass. That was a big part of their offense. I also like the offensive move by Parker, the smooth lefty. Notice Ayani on the glass, keeping things alive. And for Saginaw, Arthur Hill, their press by Coach McMath really jump-started their offense. They got a lot of layups. They shot over 50% from the field. Why? Because they scored in transition. It certainly changed the uh, complexion of the first half when Arthur Hill began to put the clamps defensively full court on Okemos. And even though Okemos comes in as the number one team in the land, Arthur Hill doesn't seem overwhelmed. No, they are athletic. They're, they're very strong physically. They have a lot of multi-dimensional players that can defend, help on the glass. They're not afraid to share the ball, and they're very good off the dribble. In their semifinal win, Okemos was led by Jonathan Jones. They will need him to be equally as good here in the championship game. We'll continue with halftime from the Class A title game after this. The best Pistons coverage is here on FSN, Sunday at 7. You're watching the state basketball finals on FSN Detroit. Almost ready for third quarter play. Last year, over 12,000 men and women answered the call to make the call by becoming high school game officials. To you, we say thanks for being involved in educational athletics. And while many have answered the call, many more are always needed. Online registration for the 2006-2007 school year begins April 3rd at MHSAA.com. Our officials doing a terrific job here this afternoon. James Skipper, Ralph Johnson, and Jim Easton. Couple from Grand Rapids and one from Davison. There's a nod in appreciation for the kind words, perhaps. Well, you know what I like about it? There were only 10 fouls called in the first half. They're letting the kids play while they still have control of the game. I also like the fact that both these teams have shot the ball exceptionally well. There's a lot of pressure. The lights are very bright in a championship game. Both teams over 50% from the field. Okemos six points down. Let's find out uh, what their coach thinks, Shereen. Thanks, John. Well, coach, you guys down by six, but also the fast break giving you some problems today. Well, we knew that was going to be uh, the style of play, and uh, we just got to take care of the ball. And so a couple of real physical plays led to some layups for them. I guess we just got to take a little bit better care of the ball, and uh, I think we can. I think we can do this. I mean, we can. We can just go play by play, box out a little better, not let them get the easy baskets. We got a chance. What's the key also individually on your team for a comeback? No, we just got to keep getting good shots, um, play a little bit better defense, box out a little better. They're just getting too much junk on us. All right, thanks, Coach. Guys? Shereen, thanks. If Okemos were to be successful, it would be the third straight Class A championship for the Capital Area Athletic Conference. Lansing Everett won it all in 2004. Holt won it all in 2005. And Okemos, led by Jonathan Jones and Anthony Ayani, still six points on the wrong end of the scoreboard at halftime. And you look at Saginaw Arthur Hill, Latreus Mushat, a pleasant surprise for Greg McMath. And we'll take you uh, inside the Lumberjacks the locker room. And these were the comments that Greg McMath had for his kids. We did our fourth goal. We're 16 minutes away from it. I think I know we can get it done, but we got to get it done first with toughness. We're a tougher team. We got to be tough. 
And it is uh, not unusual for Arthur Hill to face a deficit, even though they're leading right now. They outscored Redford in the semifinal 14 to 2 in the final four minutes yesterday. And there you see Dar Tucker and Greg McMath visiting. And a closer look at today's schools brought to you by Gardner White Furniture. And you see Arthur Hill with a little more than 1,400 kids. 66 miles from there to here. And the only basketball title way back in 1944. What a thrill to coach in this game. Both players have sons. Both coaches have sons that are playing for their teams. Jonathan Jones into the land of the trees is fouled and he'll go to the free throw line. Greg Lawson, the son of Greg McMath, as you see Lumberjack the beautiful Paul, Princeton Jones, style Jones, cut, a foul. set play, and that's a great idea because the Saginaw the Arthur Hill defense two. is so loaded up to contest on the perimeter, and the teammate of Jones is the coach's son. His name is Scott Stoles, a junior, really improved. Probably gets a chance to start a point guard next year, and it's very important because Jonathan Jones is going to be in college next year, and they're going to lead a little point guard leadership. And Dan Stoltz says that Scott Stoltz has improved greatly because he goes up against J.J. in practice. How tough would that be? It will make you better. It's Greg Lawson on a wing to Mushot. Tommy Prater, number one, top of the key. You can really see watching Jones why so many of the college coaches are falling in love with him. Our Tucker on Ayani. As it swiped away, and they're all on the floor. And a jump ball is called before Mushat can signal for the timeout. If you look at what Arthur Hill is getting accomplished so far, Arthur it's Hill. very impressive because Darquavis Tucker has not gone off yet. Yesterday, 18 and 19 rebounds. He's been quiet. Tommy Prater answers for the Lumberjacks. Basket by number one, Prater. Long five for three from Parker. Rebounded to Albert. Parker back inside. Off to Ioni and one. Yes, on the master, Ioni. It's hard to imagine what he's gone through foul, since the Brady. start of the season. Beautiful and drive, second, second delivery, foul. huge size size advantage Ioni in the paint one. for Ioni. Nice finish. Remember, in the fall, he broke his collarbone, dislocated shoulder. It's hard to imagine he's playing so well because typically with that kind of injury, it takes a good six months to a year before you fully gain your confidence and strength back. Foul on Tommy Prater, his second, which sent Ayani to the line. There's Dar Tucker. They're trying to get him going offensively. They try a three. Oh, bottom of the net. For number two. That's the Dark Quavis Tucker. Tucker that we saw on Friday. Comes to Ioni. Back to Jones. Another three try. Got it! Three. 23. Jonathan Prater. Jones. Into traffic. Foul inside. And I believe that's on Ioni. It is. Now, if Jason he's making foul, this jump shot, he becomes Ioni virtually unguardable first because he's foul. good off the dribble and can get Shooting to the rim. Foul, and the more I like Jonathan Jones because of the fact that he can score in many different ways and he's not afraid to lead his team. You know, a lot of players, especially going head-to-head -head versus St. Mary's Kalen Lucas, you'd think he's going to want to try to take a ton of shots and get his numbers. But the fact that he had eight rebounds, four assists, he still got his points, and he was able to lead his team to a victory really shows me a lot about his potential. Over to the back of J.J. Tommy Prater makes one of two. A little scramble on the floor. Parker against pressure. Here comes the trap from the Lumberjacks. Jones out of win. Stolen away by Musha. To Tucker. He'll pull it out. Really good ball hander, isn't he, John? He is. Stolen right back by Keebler. Jonathan Jones thought about a three, takes it inside. That rolls off. Rebound of Prater. Lawson will push. 
He'll pop. Got it. Three. Greg Lawson for two. Who do you focus on against Saginaw Arthur Hill when everybody on the court is a pretty solid weapon? Ivan Parker. His free try bounces out. Here comes Arthur Hill with all that speed. Crater inside. Yes. Crater. Nice pass from Greg Lawson. Assist Lawson. It's an eight-point lead for Saginaw Arthur Hill. Parker. Got it. A pretty That's solid decision. Ivan Why Parker. take it all the way when you've got the mid-range game? Lawson probably won't go. Oh, we are up and down all of a sudden. Parker is fouled on Eagle to the basket by Lawson. His second. Lumberjack foul number three. Lawson, that's his second. Beautiful athleticism. Foul. So good offensively. You know, if, if you're looking for a similar style. Duke, the Blue Devils, they read and they react so well. They use their ball skills. They're very good off the dribble. They run a motion offense that has a lot of continuity. You can really see the, the strong Duke influence in the way Greg McMath operates his offense. Parker goes right by Mushot and banks it home. Ivan Parker. A left-handed floater off glass. And we're back within four. We have warmed right up. It's Tucker against Alberts. Draws a double team. Baseline. Offensive foul on Tucker. His third. My goodness. And the longer that Okamis hangs around, the more dangerous they become. It looked like a foul. And I'm anxious to see Dart Tucker's response. Rather than being at the line shooting free throws, he gets the offensive foul. Keebler. He's getting means. Get out of the control is getting means and an offensive foul right back at you. Openness foul, 45. I'm not sure where he's going here because defensively, you have to love the position in the paint. Greg Lawson is a very solid defender, good on the ball. He's a coach's son, so you know that he's very solid. And he made two big free throws yesterday in the semifinal game to lock things up against Redford. Tucker is now on the bench. Prater goes into the lane and gets the bucket and the foul. Yes, on the Tommy Trader picking up some offensive slack. Now 13 Oakland points for number one. Kittler Very tough, hard nosed player. Tommy Prater off Prater the dribble. Greg McMath calls him the X Factor. Very good score. Takes the opponent's top score and locks him down. Timeout. 51 44. Saginaw Arthur Hill on top of Okemos. With under four minutes to play in the third quarter, we'll continue from the Brez. Championship game, and the Pistons return to action tomorrow night. We say tomorrow night on FSN when they play host to New Jersey. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. with Pistons Insider. Pistons Nets tomorrow on FSN Detroit. Followed, as always, by highlights, interviews, and analysis on DSR postgame originally. That had been scheduled as an afternoon game. And Tommy Prater is making his presence felt. 20 points yesterday, already 15 today, Tim. Yeah, and, and once again, he, there's a lot of space for him because of all the balance offensively. Eight have played for the Lumberjacks, eight have scored, and Prater has been the best. 60% from the field, he scored on a lot of athletic plays, and there's no deception. The best thing he does is off the dribble. His coach calls him a glue guy. His blue is solidified Arthur Hill's chances of a Class A championship, their first perhaps since 1944. Anthony Ioni got away with a bit of a step and draws a foul. In a conversation with Coach McMath, he said foul, their number one Jones weakness is that they're not very big foul, inside. And Coach Stoltz knows two. that if he goes inside, a couple of things happen. It opens up the perimeter game for Jonathan Jones. It also allows better lanes to get to the lane off the dribble for his teammates. Anthony Ionic 
Six foot ten inch, 210 pound junior. 14 points in the title game. Six of eight from the floor. I would say it's a pretty good chance that this year they're perimeter oriented behind Jones. Next year, when Ioni is a senior, you know he's going to get a lot of touches. He's going to get a chance to have some all state recognition. Ioni will get a blow. Replaced by Dan Hess. Also into the game, Kyle Miller. Token pressure from Okamas. And it gets more than just token. It gets taken. Jonathan Jones. Baseline Hess. Long cry for a three. Bounces out. Albers rebounds. Jones again against Prater. He's fouled out his way to the basket by Latreus Mouchat. His third personal as well. Mouchat, the story of the game early on. For Saginaw, Arthur Hill now has three, as does Gar Tucker. What a luxury, though, because defensively, everybody is so loaded up to deal with Dar Tucker that Latrez Mouchat got the early work, and now it's been Tommy Prater. Ayani back in. Jones tries the three. Ayani rebounds up and in. They're not going away, John. A three-point game. This looks like it's going to go right down to the wire. This is going to be an outstanding finish. 8-3 run for Okemos. Take it away. Here comes Jones with Hess on the wing. Jones to the basket. Yes! It's a one-point game. Wow! Arthur Hill settles things down. Okamas slips back into his own. Content to let Arthur Hill settle things down. Buying some time perhaps until Dark Tucker re-enters the game. Tommy Prater running the show for the Lumberjacks. And I think this is an advantage for Okamas. Let their players rest a little bit short in the game. Remember, Saginaw Arthur Hill has a big advantage in the athleticism department. Austin sends it out to Musha. He is fouled by Jones. And earlier I said Jonathan Jones needs to be a little bit more selfish to make sure he's the guy taking the big shot. There is no doubt that he was not going to pass that ball because he is the playmaker. And if they're going to win this game, it's going to be powered by his offensive production. On the defensive end, Jonathan Jones has just drawn his second personal foul. Sending Latreus Mushot to the line. He was fouled trying a three-pointer. So one more free throw to come. And, for Michael, no, number five, Harrison, and for she Oklahoma has a favorite 30, player. Ivan Parker. And who could blame her? <laughs> a very nice response. 15 points made all five of his shots. Yesterday he had seven and five. Seven points, five rebounds in the semi versus Detroit Redford. Mushat hits just one of three, and so the lead remains two. Jenna. Buck and a half to play in the third quarter. Don't you think that tough schedule by Coach McMath has really helped prepare them? They had six losses, and what a delivery on the back line. Parker to Jones, and we're even again. How will Arthur Hill respond? for a three. Rims out. Right to Bobby Alvarez. Who dribbles out of the double team. And draws a foul. Now, I want you to notice what Okemos has done. They've moved Jonathan Jones off the ball. He's now playing shooting guard. And Ivan Parker with a great back but that's the answer right there. The defense is really covering the perimeter hard, so it's the safety valve where you can make that back cut and try to get to the rim. At the line, 
Third personal foul on Emmanuel Sledge. And Okamus looks to continue a run that is now 12 to 4. Jonathan Jones getting some medical attention, as you can see at the top of your screen. We had an occasion yesterday where Kalen Lucas had some blood on his shorts and they had to change shorts with a teammate during the game. Of course, he had the underneath bike shorts that all the players seem to like. And, well, that's good. No, no modesty threatened. Final minute of the third quarter now. Bouchard gets double and puts it up nonetheless and draws a five. Foul on Albers. Albers. That's Bobby Albers' third foul. foul. Albers is a neat story. 3.9 grade point. State champion in golf. Scratch player. I'm jealous. Yeah, we hate him. <laughs> and, and what an opportunity to win two state titles in the same year. Hey, if you miss any of today's championship action, get all the details tonight on a special edition of the Detroit Sports Report. It's DSR Basketball Finals Recap tonight at 10. Immediately following the Class B title contest, here on FSN Detroit. A lot of good basketball talk Absolutely. about these days. And the Class B championship game coming up at 8 p.m. here on FSN Detroit. Right, East Grand school. Rapids and Detroit Renaissance. Yeah. Well, they love Arthur Hill, but they don't particularly like what's transpired lately. Lead's been All cut into. Lumberjacks on. back up by two now in the final ticks Michigan of the Parker, third quarter. Michigan this is the third championship Miami. game to be contested here at the Breslin Center. The day began with the Class D championship, and Wyoming Tri Unity Christian got 26 points and 10 boards from Andy Venema, and they outlasted Sacred Heart. And then the Class C championship game, Saginaw Buena Vista. Beat Berrien Springs 57 52. Tory Jackson bound for Notre Dame with a big game. And Saginaw Arthur Hill trying to make it two straight Saginaw victories. Okamas going to have something to say about that. And Okamas just next door. 1,354 kids, three miles from Lansing. And they won it all in 1981 and 82. And the father of Dan Stoltz was the coach of the team back then, Stan Stoltz. More on that. Still to be uh, discussed. Bobby Alvarez. Wyani. He's fouled. Nope. There's a travel. Anthony took a bit of a shuffle. And Arthur Hill will look to add to a two point lead. Wyani. As I take a second to, to look into the stands, you know, maybe my favorite thing about this, look in the background, you see all the faces, the, the face painting and the outfits and wearing basketballs on your head. And this is really such a great solidifying thing for a school. They have all the students come here and, and they're hugging and they're high-fiving and they really care about how their team does. Each team with double figures in turnovers. Coach has never cared to see. Were you ever a face painter, John? I wasn't a face painter, but I have great regard for those who do, <laughs> particularly in this atmosphere. Travel. Called on Demarcus Carroll. And so, with just under six seconds to play in the third quarter, Ultimus will get a chance to pull even again. And perhaps more. Do you, do you notice the difference offensively when Dart Tucker is not on the court? They're, they're almost looking for somebody to make a play, and he's sitting on the bench. And having said that, Dart Tucker relatively quiet, at least by Dart Tucker's standards. Jonathan Jones got it. Wow, a three-pointer. You know, he's a wizard off the dribble. His stock is rising. He can create deep. He can take it to the rim. He makes his free throws. He's a complete offensive player. Jonathan Jones, that's their first lead since it was 9-7. to seven. To the great delight of all those face painters, Okamas with their first lead since it was 9-7. That was yesterday. The fourth quarter still to come to determine the Class A champion. Will it be Greg McMath? Will it be Dan Stoltz? 
Arthur Hill and Oklahoma's headed to the wire. Oh, we can't wait for the finish of this one. Number one, Okemos has clawed their way back in and beyond. One point game as we head to the fourth. Fox Sports is proud to be the new home of the Bowl Championship Series, which is coming off of the highest ratings in its history. Beginning in January, Fox will be home to the Sugar, Orange, and Fiesta Bowls, as well as the new BCS Championship game. The BCS moves to Fox beginning in January 2007. 23-16 yeah. for the Chieftains in that third quarter. You know, I, I know that Greg Campy at Oakland wants him badly, and that'd be a good fit, and all the Mid-American Conference schools want him. You can't convince me that Jonathan Jones is not a high, high major player. After seeing him in person, I don't see any flaws in his game. I know that he's not real big, but he is so good off the dribble. He's unselfish. I really like him a lot. He had 25 points in the semifinal win over Orchard Lake St. Mary's. He's got 25 today with still a quarter to be played. Ivan Parker. And Mike Keebler zigged when he thought he was going to zag. Yeah, that's not good either. Turnovers. So big in the fourth quarter of the title game. I really like the nickname Lumberjacks, don't you? I do. <laughs> There's Dark Tucker back into the game. Oh! Dark Tucker answers! Yeah, and we know that he's high major. And only a junior. You'd have to think that he's one of the, the real strong candidates for Mr. Basketball next year. Keebler in the paint. Ayani rebounds, but his shot won't go. Out of bounds. And Arthur Hill will get it back. Dar Tucker, like Jason Richardson, who played at Saginaw Arthur Hill, he's really unselfish. He plays like him athletically, and when he's making that shot, boy, he is going to be really tough. Worked a lot in the, in the jump shot over the course of the summer. You can see the, the benefits. Richardson still very close to the Saginaw Arthur Hill program. I think his coach today, as a matter of fact, for Richard Luck. Now with the NBA's Golden State Warriors, formerly of Michigan State. Jones, back to Albers, a three, yes! Back on top goes Okemos. And here's that zone. They play 95% man-to-man, -man, but against Saginaw Arthur Hill, they don't shoot great from deep other than Tucker. They are really matching up with him at the three-point line. There is a turnover. Tucker called for carrying the basketball. And, and did you notice that as he put the ball on the floor, five guys in blue all collapsed to the paint. And John, what do you think of this as an idea? Saginaw Arthur Hill getting back to that full court pressure defense to try to speed up the pace. It certainly changed the way the game was played in the first half. There's a little pressure that leads to a turnover. Tucker to the basket. Yes! Yeah. Oh! Dar Tucker saying, take that! Alvers off the iron. You, you're sensing a little momentum shift here? Oh, my goodness. Prater. Yes! We talked about punch and counter punch. They are coming in rapid succession now. It might be Jones time. Three, 23, Jonathan Jones. Wow, great stuff at the Breslin Center. We are even. Under five and a half to play. It's almost as if these kids looked at the clock and said, hey, it's, it's the fourth quarter of a state championship. Let's elevate. Crater. Oh, my goodness. Great for number one. Jones, Keebler. Basket by 24. Jonathan Keebler. Jones is making every single play. And he's yelling at his teammates. I just saw him. His words were this. Get a stop right now. Welcome is back in that zone. Content to let Arthur Hill handle the basketball beyond the perimeter. 
Art Tucker running the show. Crater left alone. Off the back iron. Rebound to Keebler. You see, the problem with that shot, John, is that Tucker was 35 feet from the basket. He's your best offensive rebounder. The shot may be a little bit quick. Yanni has a slap back to his hands. And Anthony Ayani is going to be called for the foul. All right, welcome, welcome back to, to the Dar Tucker Ayani. show. Watch the hesitation. Foul. He exploded. Ah. Classic baseline operator. There is nothing you can do. Was that his Jason Richardson imitation? Had that get out the way feel to it. 21 sledge. Emmanuel Sledge comes back into the game. Dan Hess comes back into the game. Johnny will sit. Ivan Parker will sit. Danny Means has re-entered for the Chieftains. As we come down the stretch. It's time for the headliners to take over. Dar Tucker needs to make plays not only for himself, but his teammates. Greater inside against Hess. That won't go. Two guys have a basketball. Jump ball called. And Saginaw Arthur Hill will keep it. Under four minutes to play. And it is a one point lead for the Lumberjacks. Thanks to the high flying exploits of Dark Clavis Tucker. Oh, we've got something good happening at the Breslin. The Class A final, Saginaw Arthur Hill by one. And let's go back in time. Turn of the century. Remember him? Jason Richardson, Michigan State standout, doing the open court stuff. Unstoppable. The drive sets up the three, the excitement. Jason Richardson, one of the great athletes in my Michigan high school history, 9.6 in his years at Michigan State, 18.5 in the NBA. Wow, what a player. And on that instance, Saginaw Arthur Hill came up just short to Ann Arbor Pioneer. And so Dar Tucker is trying to end a string of championships not yet won it goes all the way back to the mid 1940s he's got a long way to go but I think at this stage he is a little bit more skilled than Jason Richardson was at this point in his career and let's see if he can try to create something because Greg McMath set up a play and I think that Dar Tucker will be involved somehow okay this is slapped the man to man back on and Dan Hess gets called for a foul, trying to keep Dar Tucker from the basket. I'm not well versed on the Arthur Hill playbook, but that one right there was called the clear out for Dar Tucker play. That's the 17 foul for Okemos. And so Tucker will shoot free throws. At least one. Ivan Parker in one and one until we get to 10 team fouls, and then we'd be in a double bonus situation. Yeah, enjoy the numbers of Dark Quavis Tucker. Earlier this summer, Tucker Greg McMath had his team go to the Michigan State team camp. They played on this court during that week, and the message was simple this is where we want to be come March. It seems to be some pretty good scheduling right there. It's a team to a place you'd like to end the season at the beginning of the season. One of two for Dark Tucker. John, we're so focused on the action. Take a look around us real quick in the stands. I, it, it's easy to forget how many people are here. This is a full building, and they're so excited about this game. Don't forget Pistons next tomorrow night on FSN Detroit. We have a lot of basketball to be played between here and there. Parker to Jones. The matchup now from Arthur Hill. Tommy Prater. Hands it off to Mooshot. Pulls it away. Tucker, top of the key. What position would you call him? He's a point forward, I guess. And with center skills. <laughs> No basket. No basket. Offensive foul on Latreus Musha. His first. Four. Uh, take a look at the, the post foul. play. Yeah. You dip that shoulder. The referee's about seven to eight feet away. 
Can you say another facet of his game not bad on the defensive end? Jonathan oh, Jones. Got some uh, theatrical ability to him. <laughs> Parker, through pressure. Keeps going. Oh, he'll eat that one. Inside it goes into the land of the trees. Goes to Marcus Carroll, and he'll shoot free throws. The foul is on Keebler. Foul 24, Keebler, his second, 17 foul. Second for Michael. Yeah, very strong in transition. DeMarcus Carroll is a scoring guard, can take over some lead responsibilities. Carroll. It's his third year on the varsity. Next year, he gets featured. And they very well may be back he here, John. Greg McMath building a very nice program. And that program right now has seen a lead re-extended to three. And it will sit right there, but a rebound inside from Tucker. Ayani gets the loose ball. Jonathan Jones will settle things down. Off Ivan Parker on a win. Bobby Alvin. Foul inside, away from the ball. And the foul is on Mushot. McCray is his second foul. very quickly. Mushot, his second, 19 foul. At the line, Ayani. Ayani's doing some good work. You saw a nice move by Carroll, but you have a sense that as we approach the two minute mark, that the winner of this game will be powered by their star player, Jones or Tucker. One of those guys is going to have to take over and take over this game and, and try to, to make plays for their teammates. And the man for the Chiefs, Prater. On a win. We've got only a sophomore in a championship game. And so far, no touches on this trip for Tucker. He wants it. Bobby Albers is trying to make sure that he doesn't get the basketball. Inside it goes, yes! Emmanuel Sledge off a nice dish. Oh, and that's a big that's lead at this 21. point. Jones, oh! An NBA three-pointer! It was a big lead, and they called a timeout, timeout to set up their pressure. Why is that so big? Open because match. if they are down Open by timeout. eight points, if he misses that shot, it becomes a free throw contest for Arthur Hill. A buck 32 to play in the Class A championship game, and Jonathan Jones with no conscience whatsoever. Oh, that's cold blooded. This kid is having a superb game. 31 points now for Johnny Jones. And he's got it all. Four years on the varsity. The Okemos all time leading scorer. He thinks the game, makes big shots, can get to the rim whenever he wants, finishes with either hand. Yeah, I haven't said in my Jonathan Jones fan club form yet, but I'm going to have to get that done pretty soon because I like him. Well, he has a lengthy list of college offers that he has to sort of wade through. He'd like to have that decision done by the time he goes on spring vacation next Sunday. A busy week ahead for the family of Jonathan Jones. A look at our game summary. Oh, there's the 31 points from JJ. Tommy Prater coming up big for the Lumberjacks. And the fast break point's a big part of this basketball game. Too. That's exactly right, John. The fast break is the story. When Arthur Hill's pressure defense is working, they are playing in transition, they're getting layups. That's been a big story. And if you look at their field goal percentage in this game, they're 55%, 62% in the second half. And I would guess we're gonna see some full court pressure here. A little token backcourt pressure. You're gonna see in the backcourt, you're gonna see Dan Hess sort of trying to put some thoughts into the back of the ball handler's mind, but when they get to half court, that's when Okemos will jump them. We're glad you're along. What a finish for the Class A championship. Arthur Hill in blue, up by a bucket. Under a minute and a half to play now. Here comes the pressure from the Chiefs. It's tapped away. Oh, it's rolled out of bounds. And that's but a good break. That's a good break. Why? Because 
if he doesn't save that, or if he does save the ball, that's a layup. Yoda on the weak side, playing the passing lanes. Let's see if we can see it. He's lucky he stepped on the line. Michael Keebler would have put it up and down. Hold. No Called on Saginaw Arthur Hill. And we will shoot two Lumber free throws. Foul, two Tucker, that's his fourth. Ten free foul. Fourth foul now on Demarcus Carroll. And don't forget the Class B championship game still to come. If it, if it lives up to what we have witnessed thus far, it is must see TV. East, East Grand Rapids and Detroit Renaissance. Now how do you think Tuan Porter's ankle is going to be? That was a concern. He strained it in the yeah, final seconds of last run, night's run, game. Run, but let's concentrate on what we have right now. Bobby run, Albers to shoot a free throw to give number. his team a tie. And yesterday in practice, listen to this. 62 straight free throws. Coach Dole's him, told his guys, make your free throws. He said, I made 62 in a row, coach. And I just made two straight, the biggest two of his high school career. And Saginaw Arthur Hill will take a 30-second timeout. We are dead even, 68-68, with a minute 19 to play. And the building is just buzzing. What's being talked about in each huddle, Mr. McCormick? Well, let's listen and find out. Alright, if you could hear him, this is what he's saying. They are going to try to contain defense. I would think they're going to run the clock. That last trap worked so well, but I think Okemos at this point has accomplished their goal of tying the score. They are going to make the Saginaw Arthur Hill team beat them from the perimeter. And there's the response. Once again, the 1-3-1 trap. Watch the weak side. They're going to be going for steals. Defensive changes for Okemos. Kyle Miller has re-entered the game. Ayani will sit. Dan Hess running the point on the press defensively. Arthur Hill will get it across the timeline. Here comes more pressure. Where's Jar Tucker? He has not had a touch in the last three trips. Jonathan Jones is now guarding Jar Tucker. Two all staters. All underneath. Jones. And in for Demarcus Carroll. Demarcus Carroll. Now, a lot of time. Make sure this is a trip that you get a great look. <laughs> you can hear the groan. Groan from Arthur Hill because a foul was called. Lumberjack foul number one. Groans of disbelief from Oakland. You know, gambling defense didn't work. Jonathan Offensive Jones rebounds. Beautiful two. delivery. Huge basket inside by Demarcus Carroll. And John, at what point do you think after he caught the ball did Jonathan Jones say, I am going to shoot this ball? That one rattles around before it drops. Tommy Prater with his fourth personal foul. That is a story worth watching. Because I'm not sure that four quarters is going to be enough to determine who wins the Class A championship. I know that Greg McMath's team is very balanced, but they got here because of Darquavis Tucker. And I don't know why his teammates are not getting him the ball right now, but believe me, if he has it in his hands, he will create chaos amongst the Okemos defenders. They'll get a much higher caliber look if they get him the ball. There's a coaching staff from Saginaw Arthur Hill huddling before they enter the huddle, and Dar Tucker making his presence felt in the second half, but not lately. Yeah. If I had to use one word to describe his athleticism, how's this? Scary. He can jump, he's quick, 
He's strong, and when he makes three-pointers, unguardable because it sets up his drive to the basket. But getting him the basketball is the challenge for Arthur Hill because Oakham is he's trying to prevent him from getting a touch. Let's listen in. They're conceding the free throw, apparently. That's a gimme for uh, Jonathan Jones. That it will be a tie game when Saginaw Arthur Hill gets the uh, basketball. Now, he, Coach McMath must have watched the game yesterday because Jonathan Jones was money. He made 9 of 11, including 8 of 10 in the last minute of the game. We'd like uh, the next one to be a little bit less nerve-rattling than the last one was. Wow, what a finish. It would be interesting if, if Coach Stoltz talks strategy about if he misses and them having to foul. I wouldn't think he would want to put any kind of a negative thought into his team's mind, but it is worth addressing. What do they do if he does miss his free throw? A 33rd point for Jonathan Jones would tie us up with 40 seconds to play. Right shot. That could not have been any more pure. Wow. 70 apiece. We're back to even again in the final minute. Does this feel like overtime? We shall see. Tommy Prater against Alvis. I'm going to say it again. Dar Tucker needs a touch on this trip. He has Dan Hess all over him. Tucker with the basketball, double team. Almost stolen away. Demarcus Carroll into the paint. A one and one, one and one hander. Rebounds his own miss. That won't go. We are going to overtime. Demarcus Carroll, who made the last bucket for Saginaw Arthur Hill, got two cracks at one, which would have won the game for them. This game deserves overtime off the dribble. I like the gutsy play by Coach Stoltz to attack. Oh, what a good look. That could have been the game winner. Wow. Nice securing of the rebound. Clutch rebound by Keebler. Looks of disbelief all around the Breslin Center. We're not done yet. We hope to stay with us. I'm sure you will. We will play four minutes of overtime. At least. 70-70. Saginaw Arthur Hill trying for their first state championship since 1944. Oakham is trying for their first state title since 1982. And Greg McMath needs to be reminded that he's having fun. There's no place else he'd rather be. Now they have four minutes. Team fouls carry over. Each team gets an additional TO. An important stat. Prater has 20. Tucker has 15. They both have four fouls. Don't think for a second that Coach Stoles did not mention that during the intermission. We'll jump it up to start overtime. Anthony Ayani and Jonathan Jones, the stars thus far for Okemos. Are you surprised that Ayani doesn't jump center? I am a bit. Better hops, perhaps, for Bobby Albers. And it's taken away by Tucker to Carroll. And it's knocked out of bounds off of Carroll by Ivan Parker. That was a huge play. It may be a good idea for Okemos to go inside. What a great hustle play. That was a nice pass by Tucker. Maybe a little contact, but I, I like the hustle and getting after it. And it might be a good idea to get Ayani a touch. So far in this game, he and Jones have combined for 50 points. You want some whistles swaddled when you're playing in overtime. Tacked away by Carroll. Right to Tucker. Back on the Lumberjacks. 
Tucker on Albert. Crater posted up inside. They'll spin. They'll have it. Strip. And a timeout called in mid-air by Ivan Parker. Wow. Really impressive. Also, let's take a look. <laughs> that couldn't be any better. Does he want to win a state championship? I think so. Timeout. Hey, John, Time another out. thing okay, worth noting. I'm reading my stat sheet here, and it says Darquavis Tucker has four fouls. But our master stat guy, Barry Smade, says it's wrong, and there's three. That's good news for Greg McMahon. That's the match he wants to talk about. Oh, this is good stuff. We're glad you're along with us. John Keating and Tim McCormick and Jureen Sasky and our FSN Detroit crew at the Breslin Center in East Lansing. The big school's playing in the big house. Arthur Hill and Okinus, dead even. Three and a half to play in overtime. Uh, a couple of impressive offensive numbers. Both teams over 50% from the field. Both teams at least 17 assists in the game. You see the faces of the combatants and those who root for them. And you get an idea as to how emotional this is. Ivan Parker. Parker runs this offense pretty well. You've got Jones working as a shooting guard. Back cut. No basket. Offensive foul on JJ. Uh, what a huge call. That's either a three-point play. That oh, could have been another foul on Tucker Jones. underneath. Huge His call. Foul. Is he there? I think he is. I think it's a good call. My. What a turn of events that was. comes Carroll. There's the All-Stater Tucker. He backs up Oliver and tries a three. Too strong. Parker to Jones. Calmly settles things down. My guess is that he's going to do something to the rim. He's been a great playmaker so far. The defensive intensity turned up. Jones. Yes. Didn't he play an amazing game yesterday against Orchard Lake St. Mary and Kalen Lucas? 25 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. To me, he doesn't look tired at all. And so much points. Two-point lead for the Chieftains. Bouchard, the sophomore. Got it. Oh, strong. Basket by number four, Latrez. Shot. I didn't expect him to be so good, John. He has been something special. Parker against Carroll. And they're looking to get Jones the basketball. Alders to Ionic. Hook! Was that Kevin McHale or Anthony Ioni? Beautiful fundamentals. Tucker. Rebound to Okinus. Uh, I would guess that Jones is going to keep the ball in his hands, and they're going to sit on the clock. Two-point lead with the basketball for Okinus. Jones on Prater. Killing clock. May have to send a double at some point. Tapped away by Tucker. Parker in front of him. Tucker rebounds his own miss, but it's knocked out of bounds, and the Lumberjacks will keep it. But Dar Tucker wanted so much more. I'm out. Now there's no help on the baseline side. Jump hook, very fundamental. And on the other end, 
I want you to notice after the play, watch Jonathan Jones. Offensive Four rebound strip. And it's important that Dar Tucker does not lose his poise. He makes a beautiful play in transition. It's a good defensive play. Let's watch down low. Right there. Okay, don't get so upset because this game is going to be in your hands, Dar. The quick hands of Jonathan Jones forces the ball out of bounds. Arthur Hill will keep it down by a bucket with a minute to play in overtime. We had seen Dar Tucker not disappear completely, but was not as much a factor, and then made his way back in with a vengeance. Our high school hoops marathon continues tonight at 8 with a Class B final featuring Detroit Renaissance versus East Grand Rapids. The Phoenix of Renaissance trying for their third title, their second title, rather, in three years. It's more MHSAA boys final finals action tonight at 8, and here... FSN. Tawan Porter, such an exciting player. I, I bet you feel like you could post him up, don't you, John? Well, if his ankle is uh, a bit gimpy as it was at the end of last night, perhaps. Well, he's a special player. Wow, we've seen some great basketball here this afternoon. The state of Michigan is very, a very fertile recruiting ground. There are so many good prospects in the state of Michigan. Tom Izzo has been around. Tom Crean, the Marquette coach, was visible yesterday here in the building. Tommy Amaker was in the house. Tommy Amaker. Inside it goes, and a quick whistle. Kick ball. It's Greg McMath. Gonna bring a title back home home that he shares with his son, the point guard. I believe it'd be a good idea to get something to the rim at this point. Remember, it's overtime. They played two tough games back-to-back -back days. You can't count on your outside jump shot at this point in time. Out. Second on inbounds it goes from Prater to Carroll, who quickly calls a timeout. Full timeout. I'm not sure what they, uh, they gained with that, but apparently McMath saw something he didn't like. Right. I know that, that both of these teams have scheduled some very good teams. Saginaw Arthur Hill had six losses because they take on the best possible. Okemos also plays in an outstanding conference. They lost at Holt, who was the defending champs. They didn't feel very good about the way that they played. But the conference has elevated them since they lost early to Holt. They beat them twice as the season continued. Obviously, the focus of Okemos was to contain as much as they could. Darquavis Tucker control the dribble penetration and limit the garbage, as Dan Stoltz put it, that he was able to accumulate off the boards. And they've done a very nice job of that to the point that they're leading by two in overtime. Dark Tucker with 15 points. Let's go. A couple of very balanced teams with good depth. 14 players have scored in this game for both teams. That would be total. Long gone are the days where you only play five or six. You win with depth. Might be the reason these teams are so strong right now that the coaches have had confidence in their guys. They've not been afraid to substitute mentioned Arthur Hill playing a very tough schedule for this reason. Ball is retained by Arthur Hill. John Keating with some very good hands well, over here. I would wow. say good hands, but self-preservation perhaps. See, I was I was worried about you. I thought you were going to get hammered by somebody coming over the top, but you showed some great hands, John. I knew you would catch him before he got to me. Out of 50 seconds left in overtime. Remember, something off the dribble would be a good idea. They're down by two points. Tucker posting up. Prater on Jones. There's Dark Tucker with the basketball. He'll spin. That's the roll. 
Jarquavis Tucker ties the game up. And a quick timeout is called. Arthur Hill. Full timeout. I need a breather. 32.8 seconds to play. Saginaw Arthur Hill and Okemos even again. You know, it might have been a good idea to send help. It's a tough job to cover Darquavis Tucker one-on-one. -on -one. What a move. He's setting up the spin. There's no help. You've got to get down there and offer some resistance because he'll leap over any man one-on-one. -on -one. What a play. Let's listen in and hear what uh, Dan Stoltz is telling his kids. like they're going to give the ball to Jonathan Jones, spread the court, and let him create. I believe that is some good coaching right there. Reference to AI is Anthony Ayani, not Allen Iverson. Now, the help has got to come from somewhere. You wonder if Keebler may be the guy that could be spotted up. They're going to take it down below 10, and then Jones will go to work. Tie game. I would get it out of his hands. I would send a double right now and make him a passer instead of a shooter. Ten seconds. And on we'll go. He had time. I think he tried to rush that shot because he expected the horn to go off. They got two looks at it, and it looked like Jonathan Jones lost his handle. It threw him off. The help defense came. Now watch. He's shooting it. He's trying to get rid of it really quick. He had a second and a half when the ball was in his hands. Here's the fumble. The shot came off very flat. H.T. gets an additional timeout. Keebler had a chance to get set, but we'll continue to play as we should. Double overtime. It's coming up here in East Lansing. More basketball still to be played to decide the Class A championship. Let's check in with Shereen. Shereen, where are you? Well, John, I am with a Saginaw Arthur Hill alum who plays football for Michigan State right now. Clifton Ryan, what do you think about the game you're watching? I'm enjoying it. I, I, I've been doing a lot of these guys. They were at elementary. And I watched them come up through the ranks, and I'm proud of these guys, and I hope we pull it out. Did you talk to any of them beforehand? Give them any well wishes? I talked to uh, Greg Lawson and uh, Quavers Tucker before the game. I told them just bring it home for the city. Win or lose, we're going to be proud of them, but I think they're going to pull it out. They're tough kids. They've been through a lot, and they're going to get it done tonight. Thanks, Clifton. Thank Saginaw already has one title today. We'll see if they get another. John? It is the first double overtime championship game in Class A in Michigan basketball history. And Arthur Hill wrestles the basketball away in the person of Dar Tucker. He goes inside. He's fouled, and he'll shoot free throws. See, at this point, the Saginaw Arthur Hill best offense is to give it to Tucker and clear out. There's nobody on the court athletically that can deal with him. He will create, he will be able to get to the line anytime he wants. The third personal foul on Anthony Ayani. Darby, this is the first of two. I can't tell you, John, how impressed I am with the way that these kids are playing. Have you noticed that with the game on the line, with tired legs, very few turnovers since the game ended regulation? Tucker hits the second. 
Remember, these kids are 17, 16, 15 years of age in a full house at the Breslin Center. Keebler to Jones against Prater. I would think anybody that's watching this game, you should call your friends and tell them to tune it in. You're watching some history here. Bobby Albers looking for Ioni. He's got him. Yes. That was a horrible passing angle and an unbelievably incredible pass to get it there. And somebody better help out. 21 points now for Anthony Ioni. His dad is one of the athletic directors here at Michigan State. Tucker. I won't go. And Jones makes a fair catch for the rebound. And Jones and Ioni have combined for 56 points. Albert against Tucker. Foul inside, away from the ball. And we're in the double bonus now. For the shoot two. Right, watch this delivery here. It's against his body. He put it the only place that the defense can't get it. With his length, there's nobody that has the size for the Lumberjacks to deal with him. That's a big foul. Huge development. Tommy Prater has fouled out. With under three minutes to play in overtime. And McMath will take a moment to decide his next assignment. He doesn't want to seem to leave, leave the court, does he? Tommy Prater will be back for a senior season, but he was having some kind of fun in a terrific basketball game. Greg Meredith has replaced him. Consulate Tommy Prater. Very unorthodox free throw style. He sets the table by putting it up top, but you can't argue with that first result. Two of two for AI. And remember, Prater was the guy who was defending Jonathan Jones. I, I believe they have many different candidates to cover him as athletic as they are. Once again, Dar Tucker is unstoppable off the dribble. Smart idea to get him involved. Loose basketball. Pretty good foul for Bobby Albers. <laughs> I, I, I agree completely. A strong foul. In a way, I was kind of anxious to see what he was going to do with this. <laughs> Jeff Jones had taken a tumble, and so there was a clear path to the basket. Latreus Mushot, the sophomore, the shoot two. Did you notice, John, that on his free throw, he wasn't tight on the release. By the time the ball got to the rim, he was already taking a step away from the foul line. That's not a very fundamental free throw. It makes it difficult. It's almost like you're a moving target as you're shooting. In and out, but oh, what a rebound! for Tucker. Dar Tucker knifing inside, putting it back up and in. Jones drawing attention. Marcus Carroll now on Jones. I think it's a good idea for a long possession here. Tired defenders, eventually you will have a breakdown and you'll get something you like a lot. Open this with a one-point lead in the basketball. Carroll right in the grill of Jonathan Jones. And that's where you want to be. If you can. Foul on Carroll. A little too much in the grill. Go back and look at that free throw. 20, DeMarcus Carroll. The biggest advantage second. that we've seen from Arthur Hill is on the offensive glass. He got in there so quick. Jones. You've got to know with the box yes, out two. responsibilities, you've got to get that low foot above Dar Tucker's before he gets in there. 
Jonathan Jones, five of six from the line. Now six of seven. And it's a two-point Chieftain lead. Now, tonight, Coach McMath, Coach Stoles will be laying in bed, and they'll be rethinking this game. I can promise you that one thing they will never rethink, that with the game on the line, they want their two stars, Tucker and Jones, to make the decision on whether they win or lose. Put the ball in their hands. 37 points now for Jonathan Jones. The All-Stater from Mokamas. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't end up with 40. No pressure from the Chieftains. Tucker way out top. Derrick, someone to come up on it. Carroll, baseline. Rebound inside. Rebound again. Another loose basketball. And Alchemist gets it back with a three-point lead and a buck 21 to play in the second overtime. The reason I said Jonathan Jones is going to get 40, and let's take a look first at the replay. There it is, keeping it alive, but a lot of off-balance shots. Good break to get it out. Now, the reason I think is that Jonathan Jones is the guy that's going to get the ball. Oh, bad pass. Turnover. Carroll. Back to Carroll. Tucker. Foul on Albers. And that's the fifth on Bobby Albers. And Dar Tucker will shoot free throws. Albers, fifth foul on Albers. The Chieftain showing so much poise, lost it for just a skosh. How long is a skosh? Not long. Albers, An instant. Yep. Dar Tucker is an unusual player from the standpoint that he's left-handed and he loves to drive right. It seemed like a lot of ball on that defensive sequence. I'm going to give you a whistle, John. Do you blow it right there or do you let him play on? I let him play. <laughs> These throws are so big. Dar Tucker went one for two in his last trip to the line. Do you think on that last call, sometimes referees get caught off guard? You don't think anybody's going to pack the shot of Dar Tucker. Three of seven has gone Dar Tucker at the free throw line. And that one pulls his team to within a bucket. On this play, somehow, look at their double teaming. Now they're leaving Jonathan Jones. You need to get the ball into his hands. Why? Because he's quick. He can get open, and he makes free throws. Inbounds to Keebler, back to Parker. He is the floor general, and that is their star. A minute to play in double overtime. I might tell Jonathan Jones, don't pass it, just keep it. Do your Marcus Haynes impression, just keep the ball. They are running a spread offense. And Tucker will foul Jonathan Jones. And that would be his fourth foul. Number Jack foul. Tucker, his fourth. Do you get the sense why I said that he's going to end up with 40? Because he's going to have the ball in his hands, and they're going to have to foul him, and they're going to have to put him on the line. Well, he can get to 39 with this trip right here. Seven of eight. Eight of nine now at the line for J.J. And it's a three-point lead. For me, one shot. Ayani's in for Denny Means. The nervous excitement on the faces of the Chieftains. 45 seconds will last forever. He missed it. Well, you could see immediately, couldn't you? Didn't have quite the same trajectory. The lead stuck on three. Tucker. And the foul! Oh, my goodness. Here's the analysis. 
Dar Tucker jumps higher than everybody else. Look at that Jason Richardson-like body control. He's totally off balance. His body was facing his own bench. Tucker gets one. Yeah. Yeah, I think they like that. They've seen it before, though. Second foul on Dan Hess. Sends Darquavis Tucker to the line to tie it up with 34 seconds left in double overtime. And he's only a junior. Money. Timeout. Saginaw Arthur Hill. I'm going to ask you again, John, have we ever seen triple overtime in Class A history? Well, we've not seen double until today. <laughs> so by conclusion, we can tell you that we've not seen triple either. But that possibility greatly exists right now. Okum is 25 and 1. A 26th win would bring the title. Three miles home. Saginaw Arthur Hill, 20 and 6. Let's hear what Dan Stoltz is telling his kids yet again. I can, I can almost, guess he's telling well, I can almost promise you because we saw it at the end of the last overtime with about the same amount of time on the clock. They said, Jonathan Jones, we're going to give you the ball. You dribble around, you contain, then you drive. I want you taking a shot with five to seven seconds to go in the game. Keebler will spot up probably on the left-hand side. And I do believe this. It would be wise for Saginaw Arthur Hill to send a double team and get the ball out of Jones' hand. Make the support guy beat you. Don't give Jones a chance to win the game. Well, it's a matter of which team can get their butterflies to fly in formation with 34 ticks left in the second overtime. What do you think? Are more butterflies or they're just weary? Their butterflies are laying in the bottom of their stomach. They're worn out by now. Nine ties and a double, a dozen lead changes. And Arthur Hill is remembering well what happened to that nine-point lead. Jonathan Jones. Here's the clear out. Heard his Carroll. Five seconds. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Five second violation. Now, what a turn of events. Now the Lumberjacks can win it. And Dan Stoltz yes, was Dan thinking, worst case scenario, we take a shot to win the game and go to a third overtime. For Emerson. Hess comes into the game, and his sole purpose is to make sure that Tucker doesn't get the ball. But there is Dar Tucker with a basketball. Notice Ten seconds left. They want it out of his hands. It's the roll. Tucker. And they did it the way they've been doing it all game. Look at it, it's a double team. He blows right by the double. No containment. What a great touch. This guy is a freakish athlete. He jumps right over the top of the defense. And all of a sudden, what looked like a great opportunity to win the game for Okamas, now they've got to do something special to extend it. Darquavis Tucker might have been a little bit late in arriving to the party, but arrive he has. Not get beat long. Let him come back to the ball. That means they have step behind him. Don't let him beat you long. No foul. Don't let him beat you long. Whoever the man gets the ball, you got to go to the ball. Do not go to the ball. It's definitely a containment defense. No fouls. 
straight up, and as soon as the shot goes up, you know, don't even concern yourself with rebounds. There's not enough time. Contain your man, contest his shot. Do not foul if you're Arthur Hill. It has been since 1944 that Saginaw Arthur Hill last won a basketball championship for the state of Michigan. Here's what I want. I want to see the ball in Jones's hands. I want him to launch a three and decide this thing one way or the other. Look at the double team on Jones. Oh, they missed the opportunity to get it to him. And they barely got the time on call before another five second call. You know, kind of interesting. I, I would have thought they would have given him the ball, but it, he would have been going against the grain with his left hand. He's a faster dribbler with his right. I think they should line him up so that when he cuts across the lane to get the ball, he's dribbling with his right hand. Dan Stoltz is coaching his heart out. And we can't get close enough to give you an accurate chance to hear what is being discussed. But you can see that the Arthur Hill kids believe that the party is on. Saginaw Buena Vista has already won a basketball championship. They won the Class C title earlier today on FSN, beating Varian Springs. And Arthur Hill making a double dip. Saginaw Day here at the Michigan High School Athletic Association Championships. And it might be a good idea because the Arthur Hill defense is so loaded up to deal with Jonathan Jones. Maybe you use him as a decoy to free up somebody near half court. Four and a half seconds, plenty of time to get off a good shot. Maybe plenty might be a stretch, but enough time to get off a good shot. Look at those faces. Double team on JJ, right in front of us. They're not going to guard the inbounds passer. Title on the line. a bit of trickery by the Chieftain. Openers foul, 30, Parker, his first. Double by on. Two free throws to come. Yeah, not a good Michael pass. They used him as a decoy. His quarterback the skills, the something to be desired. And, and as many good things as, as we've said ball. about Jonathan Jones, this is his eighth turnover in this game. Now, it's not over. Remember, Oklahoma still has one timeout remaining. Demarcus Carroll is also a football player. Yeah. As evidenced by that steal right there. And if he makes this, we can say pretty confidently, game over. What a thrill to have a free throw to win a state championship for your team. Ball game. Saginaw, Arthur Hill has won it. Uh, they may, they may put a tenth of a second on. Yes, no, it's game over. Father and son. Hero and fan. In 1999, Jason Richardson played for Arthur Hill. They lost in the state championship. Greg Lawson, a young man at that time, went to his dad, Greg McMath, and said, someday, I'm gonna bring a state championship to, to you. But he delivered. Dar Tucker steps up big time with a game on the line and leads the Lumberjacks to victory. To the great dismay of the Chieftains from, Oak from Okemos. What a game. We'll continue. The trophy presentations are next as we continue from a wild Breslin Center. 
Arthur Hill has slayed the Giants. They have knocked off the number one team in the state. They beat Okemos by a point in double overtime to win the Class A share. It was tremendous. Jonathan Jones was the best player in the building today. I was disappointed in the five-second call. I'd like to see that play out. And Dart Tucker, as advertised, is phenomenal. We have, uh, we've been glad that you've been a part of what has been a most memorable basketball game. And there is more to come. Our next game comes up at 8 p.m. with a Class B title matchup featuring Detroit Renaissance and East Grand Rapids. Now for Tim McCormick and Shereen Saski, I'm John Keating saying so long to the Breslin Center where the final score in a wild Class A final stag to Arthur Hill 85, Okemos 84. You've been watching high school basketball. We'll see the DSR basketball finals recap on FSN tonight at 10 p.m. Goodbye for now from East Lansing. On an all-new